Okay, so I'm going to talk in this, uh, this video about two-dimensional mathematical modeling. So this is the main, uh, main topic that I'm going to talk uh, about. And I'm going to talk about this topic related or from ASC 4117. And remember well that we're talking about this code which is related to seismic evaluation and retrofit of existing structures. Remember that it is for existing structures, not for new structures, okay? So I hope that you understand this point. One thing that I want to highlight here, commonly we are using this code whenever that we are dealing with evaluation or whenever that we are dealing with existing structures in general. But remember that we have another code which is ASCE-7, which is, I'm going to talk about it later, but it is, this is mainly for new structures, okay? So remember this whenever that, or bear in your mind this difference whenever that we are talking about any hint related to ASCE uh, 41 or ASCE uh, 7. They are different in the way that we are going to use them. Okay. Now let's go to another issue which is related to the introduction for uh, for this uh, little uh, video. Uh, the main reason actually for making this video is to understand that we have some options. Let's go back here. Uh, having or making the two-dimensional uh, mathematical model, sometimes it is um, going to save us time and it is going to be simpler and easier for us to implement. So this is why we need to understand when and when not to use it. When and when not to use it. And what is the code is telling us about this two-dimensional uh, modeling, mathematical modeling. So sometimes we need to check highly complex structures. So remember that we are dealing with highly complex structure using a simple model because of time limitation or a quick decision is needed. Th that's commonly the case for most of engineers and researchers and so on. Before going and indulging into the, uh, the nitty gritty parts of the complex structure and modeling techniques for every element and every component, you need to have some uh, like uh, ins an insight or to get some uh, relatively uh, intuitive information about the the structure that you are having. So simple model is going to be one of these tools in your hands to give you important information or some uh, to have some uh, some feeling of the structure that you have. Okay, so this is why we need it before going into the highly complex structure and highly complex modeling. 2D instead of 3D is one of the options available to use, but we need to know whether it can be used or not based on seismic design codes. For example, we need to know whether that it is allowed or not based on ACE 41 and also ACE 7. We want to know whether they are allowing it or not and to how uh, or to what extent they are allowing it. Okay. So that's important. So here we are talking about the tools or something that we can do, but here we want to talk about what are the limitations for using this. The more advanced, actually this is my own opinion, this is my comments here, the more advanced the analysis is, the more detail required in the model and the more time and thought required. That's very important. So if you are going to make a complex structure, 3D complex structure, then you are going to spend a lot of time and you need to think about it more. And sometimes you need to take a quick decision for a, a particular uh, resisting, seismic resisting system, for example, or you want to understand what is the, uh, the deformation here or what is the response of the structure under this loading condition. So you need quick decision or you need a quick um, understanding of some particular part. So here, uh, I'd like to always like uh, advise the students and engineers regarding this issue, to be wise in the way that you are modeling. 
and in many times you are going to find that preliminary simple modeling is going to be a good option for you before going into the 3D complex modeling. Additionally, validation of complex models is much more difficult than it is for simpler models. That's very right. Whenever that you are going to validate your model, you're going to find that it takes time for you whenever it is highly complex models. But for, for the 2D, it is going to be quick. Okay, now let's go to <clears throat> the point what I want or the point where that we can find 2D to be analyzed. When to use two two-dimensional mathematical modeling according to ASC 4117. So we're going to find this in the code under item 7.2.3 mathematical modeling and under 7231 basic assumptions they are putting it like this a building shall be modeled analyzed and evaluated as a three-dimensional assembly of components full stop so here they are recommending three-dimensional okay so now we can put our priorities or we can put it like this first priority or first thing is 3d okay this is in modeling analyzing and evaluation right okay after that alternatively take care of this word because it's a key word here alternatively there is an alternative there is other option but there are some constraints we're going to read them in short in short use of two-dimensional model shall be permitted take care of this word permitted it is allowed you can do okay but again the first is the first priority <clears throat> for you a three-dimensional so two-dimensional model shall be permitted if the building meets one of the following conditions so we have two conditions and if one of them uh, is being met then we can use it is permitted to use two-dimensional modeling number one the modeling has rigid diaphragms as defined in section 729 and torsion effects do not exceed the limits specified in this section 7232 or torsion effects are accounted for as specified in section 7232 what is the meaning of the first option here we are having rigid diaphragm okay rigid diaphragm means that the structure have the, the structure has a diaphragm that is considered to be rigid okay rigid not flexible diaphragm okay so you are going to ask me what is the difference between rigid diaphragm and flexible flexible diaphragm and how we can um, get the difference between the two I'm going to explain it uh, in a minute but now remember that if we have rigid diaphragm rigid diaphragm means that the forces can be transferred from the main resisting elements or from one component of the resisting element to another component using the rigidity of this diaphragm okay so it is it should be rigid diaphragm and remember it is and here torsional effects do not exceed the limits specified in blah 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 this means that we are not expecting any torsional effects or any torsional if we have something this is the plan of a structure for example we're not expecting we're not expecting any kind of irregularities in the model that we are uh, using okay because in this case 3d modeling is a must you need to and you have to actually in this case to use 3d modeling okay so there are two things here first <clears throat> rigidity of the diaphragm and torsional effects are not existent or they are exist but we are taking account or accounting for them based on this section okay okay now this is the first option the second option is going to be related to the building has flexible diaphragm as defined in section 7.2.9 I'm going to talk about it in a minute okay so the second case is the flexible diaphragm as I said before <coughs> flexible diaphragm means that it is the diaphragm is not able to transfer the forces okay flexible diaphragm means that the uh, system or the uh, the floor level for example will not be able to <clears throat> to give the rigidity or the enough rigidity that we are expecting in order to transfer forces from one element to another okay so this means that the 3d dimensional or modeling is not important in this case or we cannot say it's not important we can say that 
you are permitted to use 2D in this case. You are permitted to use 2D in this case. The building has flexible diaphragms as defined in section 7.2.9. Okay, so another thing that we need to take care into consideration, which is if two-dimensional models are used, the three-dimensional nature of components, take care of this, components, and elements shall be considered when calculating stiffness and strength. That's right. What is the meaning of this? Sometimes we can find that if we are detailing or we are using 2D dimensional analysis, sometimes we encounter something like this. A shear wall that is having L or T shape, for example, okay, in this line. And we have another something like like this also here so this means that if we are going to consider this this axis for 2d dimensional analysis then the 3d component effect stiffness and strength of this component of this shear wall for example which is t section should be in count should be taken into consideration that's the meaning of the word component here and elements like braces or shear walls, for example, that do not have planar, planar, you cannot model it in a plane, a 2D plane, uh, for example, but it has something like T-section or something like this, shall be considered when calculating stiffness and strength of the property. Okay, uh, thank you for this video. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about something related to the same <coughs> uh, point.